What's up everybody, another beautiful day in the Dragon House and today I'll be going over the Elementalist build for raids going into the new raid Aberus. Now if you played Enhancement and Vault of the Incarnate, you'll recognize a lot of this, but there has been some changes and updates, so stick around to learn more. For newer players, the Elementalist build or builds, they offer great versatility as we're able to shift a point here and there to tailor our build to target count or what we need for a specific encounter. You can have full single target, three target cleave, six target AoE, more funnel, meaning we can use all the resources we get from AoE into a single mob. So it's extremely versatile as long as you know how it actually works. But fair warning, this build's rotation, if you can call it that, is a lot more complex than the storm build. So it might not be for everyone and it can be a bit hard to pick up. However, if you want to excel at enhancement, it is well worth learning both storm and and elemental list as they excel at different things. So sometimes you want to use one and then the other. And there's also been a lot of updates to our talents and abilities going into 10.1 and I have videos out covering all of our changes, how they impact us as well as how our new tier set bonus works and what it do. So I recommend checking those out if you want to know more about that. I also have other build guides out for M plus and raids that are up to date for 10.1 and I'll also be streaming a lot of raid progression and M plus when season 2 starts. Starts, so feel free to hop on by. Now with that out of the way, let's go over the build. Starting off with the pure single target elementalist build and how the talents work. And then I'll cover the different variations of that tailored to different needs. So we'll get all the Lava Lash talents, Molten Assault, so that we can spread and refresh Flame Shock with Lava Lash, and it also reduces its cooldown. Hot Hand for those spicy empowered Lava Lashes. When it procs, it reduces Lava Lash cooldown by 75% and increases its damage done by 40% for 8 seconds. Then you have Ashen Catalyst each time your Flame Shock dot ticks. It increases your next Lava Lash damage by 12% and reduces its cooldown by a half second. And the damage increase stacks up to eight times. And this is partially where we get some of our funnel from. Having Flame Shock up on multiple targets and then Lava Lashing a priority target or boss, consuming those damage increases on a single target instead of spread across the board. More dam dam. So in this one instance, multi dotting is a single target increase. Then we have Lashing Flames. Lava Lash increases the damage of Flame Shock on its target by 100% for 20 seconds. And due to this talent, when there's multiple multiple targets and you don't want to funnel damage into a single target, you instead swap target on each and every Lava Lash. This will debuff them, taking 100% more Flame Shock damage, but in turn, you'll consume Ash and Catalyst stacks every time on different targets, so there's no funnel, but you do more AoE damage. Because Flame Shock is a big part of our sustained damage on AoE, so need more AoE? Tab target on Lava Lash. Need more priority damage? Don't tab target. Big brain. We then get improved rage and overflowing maelstrom, increasing our maelstrom spender damage and we can have and spend up to 10 stacks of maelstrom rather than 5. So our spenders slap harder and it gives us more wiggle room in our rotation. We then get ice strikes, hailstorm and swirling maelstrom. Ice strike increases your next frost chuck damage by 100% and hailstorm increases your next frost chuck damage by 15% per maelstrom spent. Spend 10 maelstrom, frost chuck does 150% more damage. On top of this, hailstorm also increases targets hit by frost shock by up to five for a total of six targets combined with swirling maelstrom ice strike generates one maelstrom and consuming two plus hailstorm stacks on a frost shock generates one maelstrom as well this helps a ton with overall maelstrom generation on single targets now this combo is overall great for single target and pretty damn insane for aoe a big portion of our aoe and cleave damage is from these empowered frost shocks as anytime you spend maelstrom you'll be able to fire off an empowered frost shock and every other frost Frost Shark will be empowered by Ice Strikes as well, dealing an additional 100% damage on up to 6 targets. We also get Wind Fury Totem to help the raid group and buff ourselves with it, but more so for the lucky Wind Fury group. Pick me! But I gain so much damage! And Storm's Wrath for more Wind Fury and Stormbringer procs from our mastery enhanced elements, Fire, Nature and Frost. But more so because it enables us to get to Elemental Blast, which is a huge contributor to our single target and our funnel damage. 
but more on that later. And Sundering, which is mainly a filler on single target and a big slap on AoE, but this activates our new tier set bonus when we get them. Giving you 24% mastery, 20% fist fire damage for 15 seconds, and you get two chain lightnings that deal 100% increased damage and refunds 50% of Maelstrom spent. So Sundering becomes your big pump cooldown all of a sudden and changes our rotation a bit as we want to squeeze in those empowered chain lightning in our single target rotation. But more on that in a bit. We then get elemental weapons, 5% fire frost and nature damage per weapon imbue, meaning flame tongue wind fury. And this is new for this patch or it's been reworked. So if you're a returning elementalist enhancement shaman, you cannot play without the wind fury weapon talent anymore as you lose 5% elemental damage by doing so. Not worth it. And since they buffed the base wind fury weapon and nerf forceful winds, it's a bigger loss overall to skip wind fury weapons, so don't. We then get feral spirits with witch doctor's ancestry and elemental spirits. Witch doctor's ancestry increases our maelstrom generation, but more importantly, maelstrom generated reduces feral spirit cooldown. This gives us a major upswing in wolfy uptime. An elemental spirit, each wolf you spawn increases either frost, fire, or nature damage by 20%, so you can get two frost, two fire, etc. Hence the elementalist part. But an important interaction to remember is elemental blast gets buffed by any wolf. Be it fire, frost, or nature, you always get a 40% damage increase to elemental blast during elemental spirit wolfies. Or actually it's 44% since it's multiplicative, but it's a lot of damn. But this is something you actively try to utilize. The more elemental blast you get out inside of feral spirit windows compared to outside, the better. More damn actually does more damn. Lastly, we actually spec into ascendance for single targets. And this is mainly due to the talents you get after, which is static accumulation and Thorim's invocation. So static gives us 20% chance to refund Maelstrom spent on chain lightning and lightning bolt and during ascendance and during ascendancy procs, we generate two Maelstrom every second. Invocation increases chain lightning and lightning bolt damage by 20% at all time. And during ascendance, wind strike, which replaces storm strike, spends up to five Maelstrom on either chain lightning or lightning bolt, whichever you cast last. Now previously we played Primordial Wave on single target, but due to the refund part of static accumulation, which is new, it is now better to go this route for pure single target, especially when you get the force at bonus. Since the force at bonus means empowered chain lightnings that you will slap away, which in turn refunds 50% of maelstrom spent due to the force set. But it can also, on top of that proc, proc static, refunding all maelstrom Maelstrom spent on top of that, and any Maelstrom refunded counts as generated, meaning it reduces Feral Spirit cooldown, which is extremely big for the Elementalist build as Wolves is a massive damage increase. But with or without the force set, we will be using Lightning Bolt when we can't Elemental Blast, so more chance for refund procs. And honestly, it's extremely pleasing when you throw away a Lightning Bolt and oh, you're back at 10 Maelstrom. The Ascendance cooldown itself mostly works as a big Maelstrom generation cooldown cooldown, enabling us to wind strike to lightning bolt or chain lightning each time spending up to 5 maelstrom, and every one of those have a chance to refund all maelstrom spent. Plus you generate a ton of maelstrom passively during it, so you'll be able to squeeze in elemental blasts in this window as well as so you'll wind strike back at 10 maelstrom elemental blast while it's on cooldown, etc. And that's pretty much it for the pure single target elementalist build. Now before I break down the rotation, I want to address a few optional talents, which you can swap around depending on what you need or how many targets there are. First of all, there's currently a build for single target where you swap a point in Overflowing Maelstrom to a point into Primordial Wave. And this is, like I said, for single target build with Ascendance. Fair warning, this can change and might not be great, or it could become the so-called meta build for pure single target. And before you go, how could that possibly be good since we have Elemental Blast? You would never want to fire it off on five stacks. Well, simply, again, do to static accumulation. With it, we want to fire off as many lightning bolts as possible, giving us more chances to proc the refund from static, which in turn again reduces feral spirit cooldown. So with or without overflowing maelstrom, we will be firing off lightning bolts at 5 stacks. It's not about how hard you can slap, it's about amount of slaps per minute. And for multiple targets, as soon as there's more than one mob, primordial wave with primal maelstrom and splintered elements tends to be better. So when you press primordial wave, you get 10 mils 
Maelstrom from Primal Maelstrom, and your next Lightning Bolt will hit any target with Flame Shark on it, up to 6 targets. And Splintered Elements gives you 10% haste per target, so up to 60%. So for this, you would spec out of all the Ascendance talents and into Primordial Wave talents instead. So if there's an encounter where there's add spawning periodically, you would use that. But if there's constant low target cleave where there's always 2-4 to four targets up or most of the time at least, then you also want Crash Lightning as it massively increases your Maelstrom generation and your AoE damage. So for this, you'd take away a point in Swirling Maelstrom. And if there's even more targets than that, like full on AoE or well, up to 6 targets because that's our cap, then you would instead spec out of Elemental Blast and Storm's Wrath to give you both Crash Lightning and Crashing Storm, which increases Crash Lightning damage, but more importantly, Chain Lightning hits two more targets. But like I said, we're mostly capped at six targets, but also there's not that many raid encounters with a billion ads. And that concludes the talent portion. Now I want you to pause the video, take a five minute break, mull over all of this, come back and check the rotation breakdown. So let's start off with the single target breakdown. Make sure that Flame Shock is active, Feral Spirit on cooldown, Ascendance, Sundering to trigger two or four piece bonus if you have it, Wind Strike on cooldown if Ascendance is active. Each Wind Strike consumes up to five Maelstrom on either light bolt or chain lightning. Then you want a lava lash if you have hot hand proc active. Wind fury totem if it's not up. Elemental blast if you're at 5 plus maelstrom and at 2 charges. Chain lightning with the new four set bonus active from sundering at 5 plus maelstrom. An elemental blast if you have any wolves up. Lightning bolt at 5 plus maelstrom to fish for maelstrom refund procs. Lava lash if you're at 6 stacks of ash and catalyst. Ice strike to empower your next frost shock. And frost shock if it's buffed by a hailstorm which you get whenever you spend Maelstrom. Then you use Storm Strike, Flame Shock as fillers, and you refresh Wind Fury Totem if there's not a single other thing out there to press. Or you could AFK for one second and look cute. Choices, choices. Now, first of all, don't look at this prio order and think this is the order you press stuff in. Ah! You can look at it more as a checklist, if you will. If you have every single thing available, what should your next global be? So whenever something is on cooldown, what you should press change if something like hot hand procs, what should you press? And you just kind of go down the list. So A for example, I have 5 maelstrom, 1 charge of elemental blast, no wolf is active and I can lava lash and I can storm strike. What do I press? Lightning Bolt. Since I don't have Wolfies up and only one charge of Elemental Blast, spending on Lightning Bolt has more value, and spending always has more value than Storm Strike and Lava Lash, unless Hot Hand was active. I know it sounds super complex, but you kind of get into it. When you get used to the ebb and flow of the rotation, it's an extremely rewarding playstyle. When it makes sense, it makes sense. So an opener for this on a raid boss would be Flame Shock as you run towards boss, make sure Wind Fury Totem is up before feral spirit into ascendance into sundering if you have at least the new two set tier bonus win strike on cooldown if you can't win strike and you have two charges of elemental blast you elemental blast if you have one charge you press chain lightning to spend those empowered chain lightnings and there is a big brain min max that you can do during the ascendance window or it's easily achievable during the ascendance window since we'll be generating an astronomical amount of maelstrom during it more often than the knot, we'll be able to get a second set of elemental spirit wolves out before the first set of wolf despawn, which enables us to fire off one Omega Pepega empowered elemental blast. Quadruple wolfies, yo! This is not gonna make or break anything, but it is an increase when you're able to do it. But you don't have to rack your brain over achieving it. It's just a nice bonus. Now moving on to cleave AoE, the rotation of course shifts a bit depending on target count and if you're trying to funnel damage or not. And this rotation is with Primordial Wave, not Ascendance, Feral Spirit on cooldown, Lava Lash if Flame Shock is active on your target and you don't have Flame Shock on 6 targets, as that's the cap, Flame Shock if it's not active on any target, Lightning Bolt if you're at 10 stacks of Maelstrom, with Primordial Wave active and as many Flame Shocks up as possible. You don't want a Primordial Wave A target and an instantly Lightning Bolt when there's 5 other targets you could potentially spread it to. Then you want to cast Primordial Wave ideally on a target that's not not affected by flame shock if you don't have six of them active. So for example, you flame shock one target, primordial wave another one, and then you lava lash that one, and you'll be at six flame shock targets. If there's that many mobs, of course. Elemental
Elemental Blast if you're against two to three targets at 10 stacks of Maelstrom and have two charges of it. Because you always want to keep one Elemental Blast recharging. You never want to sit on two charges if you can avoid it. Chain Lightning if you're at 10 stacks of Maelstrom Weapon. Wind Fury Totem if it's not currently active. And then you want to cast Sundering to activate the new tier bonus. Ice Strike, then Frost Shock with Hellstorm stacks. And then you want to Lava Lash, cycling between targets to apply Lashing Flames. Like I said earlier, it increases their Flame Shock damage taken. But also, anytime you Lava Lash, it reapplies Flame Shock to the initial target as well as four extra targets. And this deals the initial Flame Shock damage. So effectively, it's like casting Flame Shock on five targets anytime you Lava Lash. It'd be slap you out. Then you want to Crash Lightning, Storm Strike, ideally with the Crash Lightning buff active. Elemental Blast, again against two or three targets. If you're at five or more stacks of Maelstrom, Chain Lightning if you're at five or more stacks of Maelstrom. Refresh Wind Fury, nothing else. Flame shock him. Now important to note with this rotation, if you're against more than three targets, a lot, like Primal Council in the last raid or adds on Broodkeeper in the last raid, you would talent out of Elemental Blast and Storm's Wrath and into Crash Lightning and Crashing Storms. So if that happens, you effectively remove Elemental Blast from the above rotation. You always spend on Chain Lightning if it's more than three targets. However, if your aim is to funnel damage into one priority mob or boss, you for sure always want Elemental blast even if there's six mobs but you need to damage the one mob then you elemental blast and you also don't want to tab target for lashing flame and instead only lava lash the priority targets you don't waste ash and catalyst stacks on other targets this will not generate the most dps overall but my but all of the funnel will massively increase your single target damage and sometimes it's not about doing the most damage it's about doing important damage to get through certain things and this is even more true in m plus with this build you pull a pack with one giant mob and four small mobs it's far better that you slap the big one and the four ones just allow you to slap more and lastly for all of the above rotation or priorities if you do not have at least two pieces from the new tier, Sundering goes way down in the prior list. So it's more of a filler when you need it on single target and without four piece, we will not send chain lightning on single target since they're not empowered. So keep that in mind. And like I mentioned at the start of the guide, the elementalist builds are more complex than the storm build. There's a lot more to it, but practice makes perfect and it is extremely rewarding to play and can be extremely good for progress if an encounter demands a specific type of damage and it's a lot of fun when you understand how it all works how the talents interacts with the rotation and like i said extremely versatile can tailor it for a ton of different scenarios lastly i really really recommend the add-on equally especially for the elementalist builds it's a rotation helper add-on and it shows you what you should be pressing next and it is very accurate so it's an incredibly helpful tool for players who are new to enhancement to help put the rotation priority into play the more you play with it the more you'll recognize the pattern. Oh right, I press this here because this. And then, as far as secondary stats goes, because everyone always asks, mastery, haste, sim yourself. The elementalist build tends to want mastery over haste, but you, yeah, can't go wrong with both. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this build guide for the elementalist raid builds. Let me know what y'all think of these guides. Any info you feel is missing, let me know. If you really want to dig deep into everything enchantment shaman, I greatly recommend reading word ups while Wowhead or Icy Vein Bible for Enhancement. Most of this is based on that, and he really goes in depth into how everything works. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Leilana and Fabio from the Shaman Discord for their help with the scripts. Thank you so much. Very helpful. And don't forget the usual stuff comment, like, subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell. There are tons of guides coming out for 10.1, both enhancement and actual raid guides. And if you want to help support my work, check out my Patreon as a patron and you get access to the stanky gaming discord you can also get shout outs and videos coaching among other things and it helps me a lot i also stream progression and testing on twitch stanky gaming feel free to hop on by and spam me with questions i love answering them and uh, yeah thank you all for watching and i will um, see you next time storm strike <laughs>